you very much for um, inviting me to, to come and speak today. Um, I love the previous speaker, by the way, and I thought your ideas around change management and how to take things forward is something I'm sure we can all um, learn from. Um, interestingly, you asked uh, how many IT people there were and how many um, clinicians there were, um, but you didn't ask about patients. So are there any patients in this room? There's a few of us, and I've brought a patient along, a specimen, if you like, from the practice. Hello everyone, my name is Yvonne. I'm a patient that's empowered. I have access to my own medical records and I'm also secretary to the patient participation group within the practice. Right, those of you that don't know me, I'm a full-time GP uh, over in Tameside. I'm the information management and technology lead, lead at um, NHS Tameside and Glossop. Um, I'm also the primary care IT lead at um, NHS Northwest. Um, and today I've been asked to come along and talk to you a little bit about sharing information with patients and empowering them to take control of their own information. Um, I started using this picture about three, four years ago, and it's a patient who's deciding to join in our practice, and it's one of those new patient registration forms, and it says, you know, do you drink, do you smoke, do you exercise, do you Yahoo? Does anyone Yahoo around here? Email? A few people. Okay, well, that was kind of very much sort of three years ago, isn't it? Because now with Facebook, does anyone Facebook? Yeah, there's a few more people, but again, that was kind of yesterday as well. Today it's Twitter. Does anyone Twitter? Okay, so that's interesting. Interestingly, at conferences I go, I still only get one hand with Twittering, but it's just kind of showing you how much the technology is moving on a little bit and starting to think about how we can move. But I'm now going to whisk you straight into the, the business end of, of healthcare, if you like. And this is me in my consulting room with my real patient, Yvonne. Um, and of course, the new white paper talks about no decision about me without me. And what does all that mean? Well, actually, there are three um, experts there. Can you identify them? Silence. Please tell me there is an expert in that photograph. Two teams and one computer. Sorry? Two teams and one computer. Okay. Anyone want to expand on that? The two humans? Well, if we talk about the doctor, first of all, uh, the clinician, it might be the nurse, it might be the allied health professional. The patient's coming along to see that clinician. It might be that patient's coming with back pain. And um, they want to know, you know, what do we do about it? And the doctor will take a history, do an examination, perhaps arrange some investigations, a plan of action, refer them somewhere else. Um, and, and those are things that the doctor's trained to do. Um, but not only that, it's possible that patient may have come with back pain. And the patient wants to know, I'm thinking about going off to an osteopath, or I'm thinking about going to this physiotherapy center, or dare I say, I've heard about the Lister Hospital and this electronic patient record and do you think that might be better than the hospital we've got locally um, and so there is something about the experience that I've got locked up inside my head of the last 10 15 20 patients that I've seen with back pain and what they've been telling me about the services that they've received um, from the from the, the, the care that they've delivered so there's expertise around how to assess somebody and also around what the services are like of course the patient is also an expert too why is the patient an expert Fantastic, absolutely. So she knows about the back pain and what's been going on. Not only the patient, but it might well be that the spouse has been up all night as well because she's been in back pain. And so the spouse has been affected by it too. Or it's possible that the family are thinking of going on a walking holiday up the Lake Districts or whatever it is, Rocky Mountains, and uh, they're thinking about booking the holiday and they're not sure whether her back's going to be okay or not. So she's got expertise around the symptoms and how it's affecting her. Now the thing is, I don't know her from Adam or Eve, but when I put into the computer system her name uh, and details, up comes on the electronic record system uh, what she suffers with, what medications she's on, what allergies she's had, who she's seen previously, letters from previous hospitals, what scans she's had done and everything else. And all those things are telling me something about this patient that I can hopefully use to take forwards with. I can see the previous six or seven invest, uh, consultations that she's had, either with myself, my partners, uh, the staff inside the practice and so on. Not only that, but I've got something like called the Map of Medicine, which is an evidence-based patient pathway. So I can type into the Map of Medicine back pain, and it will tell me the evidence base for how to assess someone with back pain, uh, what the best um, investigations are, what the indications are, at what point should I refer, uh, what other providers are there out there. So there is, the computer system is now informing me how best to manage the patient. Now this is the key point here. If we turn that screen around, so that the patient can also see, so the two experts in that photograph, the patient and the clinician, can see the same information. Then we start to move into very, very exciting territory. 
And I call this the partnership of trust. What's that about? Well, the patient's coming to me because they're trusting me to provide the best of medicine. In return, I'm trusting the patient to help me understand what's going on with them. And if we use the electronic record plus the evidence-based pathways um, to help support both the clinician and the patient, then something very, very exciting starts to happen. So how can patients access that record that I'm using to help them manage their care? Well, we use a system called EMIS Access, and it allows patients to book appointments online, and these are just screenshots I've taken of how a patient can book an appointment. They can choose an appointment, so they can schedule appointments that are appropriate to their needs. Not only that, but they can very quickly go in and cancel that appointment or change it. They can order repeat When they go online, it pulls off the computer system what repeat prescriptions they've got, and here's a list of them. Shows you how to take it, shows when it was last issued. Next to each um, medicines, there's a little blue information button. You click on that, it takes you to a web page that tells you what that particular drug means. This is the one on aspirin, and it's telling you about what it does, how it works, what the side effects are, what the interactions are, what sorts of people um, are treated with aspirin and so on. And you can also see the experience of other patients and news about aspirin and everything else. They put a second password in and they can access the full medical record. So they can see summary information. This is a summary page and you can see allergies, current medications. You can see problems, significant active and past problems in date order, which is at the top and that's what clinicians understand. Patients actually prefer the lower version, which is the same information but it's in system order. So they can see all their chest problems, all their nervous problems, all their hormone and metabolic problems. And patients are telling me that they find that information easier to understand rather than something that's in chronological. Not only that, but they can actually see the consultations. We know full well that when a patient comes to see us, when they walk out of the consultation, they can only remember three bits of information. And when they go home and the spouse says, what did the doctor say? They've probably forgotten it all. Well, my patients are now able to go online, and as soon as I hit the file button, they can go online and they can actually see the free text. Here's an example of a consultation with someone with high blood pressure and I've got a history in there, I've got a new tablet I've started, I've got the actual blood pressure reading in the consulting room, and then I've also got the plan of action, and in that plan of action it's saying, advise the patient to get a blood pressure machine, ask them to check their blood pressure a couple of times a week, ask them to store their blood pressure on health space, um, I've asked them to look at hypertension care, which is on the practice website, and I'm gonna show you that in a moment. I've asked them to uh, come back again in a month's time and bring all their blood pressure readings with them, Instead of them trying to remember all those little bits of information, it's all in the record, they can go home, they can access it on their iPhone, iPad, wherever they are in an internet cafe on the other side of the planet, and it will remind them of what they're doing. You can also see this patient's got alcohol dependence syndrome as well, and you can find out more about that too. Not only that, but they can also see their test results. So my patients are having a blood test in the morning, and then that evening they're logging online and looking at the test results to see what their glucose is, what their cholesterol is, uh, what their kidney function is. And as the doctors, when we look at the test results, when we're filing them, we file it as normal or abnormal. And you can see an example there of a cholesterol result. And it says abnormal, the actual results, what the normal range is. And again, there's a little blue information button next to it. So if they want to know more about that, they click on that and it takes them to lab tests online so they can find out more about what that test result is. Lab tests online has been produced by the biochemists from around the country. Um, and it's peer-reviewed and it's an excellent resource for clinicians as well as patients. Not only that, but they can also see what immunizations they've had. There seems to be a plethora of immunizations and more and more immunizations that we're now doing. Uh, and of course, when you turn up with a rash in the A&E department and being asked, you know, are you up to date with your immunizations? I um, don't know, I'm not sure. Well, actually, my patients can go online and they can look at all their immunizations that they've had. And again, next to each one, there's a blue information button that tells them more about that particular immunization. So what's the point of all that? What's the benefit? Well, yes, it's kind of nice. It's intellectually stimulating, whatever. But actually, what's really interesting is when a patient looks at their own record, that's the only person on the planet that can actually say whether that record is correct or not, whether there are any errors in there, whether there are any uh, things missing. Here is just an example of an email from a patient who sent me within a couple of hours of getting access to her records. And she had a whole load of comments to make about the fact that the, the, the record says that there's no allergies when actually she has got an allergy to house dust mite and pollen. She talks about the fact that there's a diagnosis in 1992 about cancer when actually she was actually diagnosed in 1998. So there's a, there's a mistake in terms of the date. She also talks about things that are missing. 
and things that are incorrect. So fibroadenoma of the breast is under the section called cancer. Why is that? The patient won't know what the reasons are, but what they're doing is flagging up errors and things that are missing and things that, are, uh, that should be there that aren't there. Uh, and what a great way of a patient being able to try and inform us so that we can get the record right so that the clinicians can then give the best care possible. Finally, well, just moving on a little bit, well, do we actually hide behind uh, confidentiality and, and privacy and whatnot and prevent patients from finding out what's going on? Well, general practice particularly has, has led the way in many ways in terms of showing how we can share information and make it available easily for patients um, and, and clinicians and managers to be able to find out how things are. And here I'm alluding to the quality outcomes framework, which is how pay, uh, GPs are now paid on the basis of the quality of care that they receive. Um, this is a screenshot um, of uh, the data that's available for patients to look at, and we actually actively promote it on the practice website. And it shows how we're achieving within the clinical domains, within the organizational domain, within the patient experience domain. And not only is it just giving us the data for our practice, but it also compares with all the practices in the PCT and also nationally. And you can choose how we're comparing in them. And in some of them, we're doing well, and some of them are not doing so well. So there's an opportunity for patients to learn more. There are other ways that people, patients can actually find out more about how we're doing. We've got a very active patient participation group. Uh, and this is on the patient zone on the practice website. There's our ex-chair um, of the patient participation group. And you can find out what they're up to. Last week it was self-care week and the patient participation group um, held a meeting on self-care for patients to learn more about how they can do things. We've got a medley of a video there. It's a seven minute video. I encourage you all to go and watch it. But down the left, you can also see the minutes of the patient participation group meetings, so you can see what issues have been raised between patients and the practice and how we're trying to resolve them. And then finally, we've talked about privacy confidentiality, again on the practice website, to describe how Horton Thorny Medical Centres, our practice, is dealing with these issues and saying, on the ha one hand, yes, we do want to think about privacy and confidentiality, but on the other hand, we also need to be thinking about how we can deliver great care and actually we can't do that unless we share the information with patients and clinicians. But starting to say, well, where is that balance to be had? I call it proportionality. And, and actually actively um, in, in, in informing patients about where we stand on that balance and how we involve patients in doing that. Back to that partnership of trust of working with patients to do so. I mentioned the fact that we've got a web portal um, it's hdmc.co.uk. I was interested in the physician portal the previous speaker was talking about. Well, we've got a web-based patient portal. It does have an intranet for the clinicians, but it's primarily designed for patients and the public. And, and this was a screenshot taken of the portal um, from a week ago. Um, it was Pink Day last Friday, which was Breast Cancer Awareness. And you can see a photograph there of a couple of our staff who were dressed up in pink and raising money for breast cancer. You can see there also quite clearly that although the practice isn't open 24 hours a day, the web-based practice portal is, and that's where they can book appointments, order prescriptions, that's where we provide them with links on how they can self-care more, including things like the map of medicine so that patients can see that very, very um, evidence-based um, um, information that's designed for clinicians but is also available for patients to see as well. It provides links to local, regional and national uh, websites and the material that's being created by clinicians, by patients, and managers in the practice. And I think that's a really important point. You won't find any advertising in there. You won't see McDonald's PLC or Boots PLC or anything like that. Everything on there is about patients and the practice and supporting them to get the best uh, from the local NHS. And just to show you, well, well go on, and let's see a real patient and how is this working for them. Well, this is David Smith. He's a patient of mine who records his own blood sugars, blood pressures, and weights. And he does that not for the clinician, but also for himself as well, because he wants to improve his ability to self-care. He actually has five consultants, and they're in three hospitals. But one of the things he noticed was even the three consultants in the same hospital didn't know what was going on, never mind in different hospitals. So he's now started to print off relevant details from his records, as he puts it, graphs of results he's had. And when he's made lifestyle changes that affected his weight or his blood pressure or his kidney function or whatever, he's able to print them on the graphs and present them to the various consultants so that they can see what's going on. And he does this because he's realized that that saves him time and money. And in doing so, he's also realized that the NHS doesn't have to repeat tests on again and again when they've already been done. He's a diabetic patient. 